Hello everyone, this is Dr. Alex Avila with Love University and we're back. I'm an author, psychologist, and speaker. Every week we talk about how to love ourselves, others, and a higher nature. How to improve our finances, career, health, relationships, and spirituality. And we've been having a series of talks on the thought demons, the critical and self-defeating inner voices that we have in our minds that prevent us from fulfilling our highest potential. And today's topic is the anger thought demon, puppet master of fury. Love university students, there is a fiery entity that compels you to act with rage, anger, and even violence. It is called the anger thought demon. The anger thought demon consists of excessive and blown out of proportion anger thoughts that needlessly cause severe damage to you and others. The damage can be to your relationships, reputation, safety, finances, and health. Not to be confused with what is known as right anger, the type of anger that rights wrongs and avenges injustices. The anger thought demon is an exaggerated form of irritation and rage that attacks everything in the world that frustrates you, ignores you, or slights you. Before we talk more about the anger thought demon, we first need to recognize that anger can be used as a positive force in your life. In small and directed doses, anger can be a productive emotion that activates your energy and emotional strength to defend yourself and others. Anger can be a productive tool to set things straight when you or others are being victimized, abused, treated unfairly, or taken advantage of. In these circumstances, anger can be a weapon for good that energizes you to act. Anger used rightly encourages you to remedy the wrongs that have been committed against you or others. It empowers you to speak your mind and correct those who have acted wrongly. And Jonathan, my producer, I was telling you off camera that I've had a few situations where people have taken advantage of my good nature and helping them. And I had some anger for a period of time, but then I decided to transform that. And we're going to talk about how to do that, how to transform anger into compassion and love. Tell us about you. You told me you had a situation that also affected you with anger. Well, uh, similar to me, I've also had times where like people abused my good nature. Yes. Uh, I, <laughs> I had this one story a couple years ago. One of my coworkers was like, hey, uh, I'm like paying bills. I don't have much money, but I really want to make my daughter happy. Uh, can you give me like 30 bucks to like help her like send, send her to a field trip? I'm like, I thought it was a hundred bucks you told me. I'm getting to that. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, he's like, yeah, 30 bucks. I'm like, 30 bucks? Yeah, sure. Whatever. And he's like, actually, I'm sorry, it's $60. Can you have me another $30? Oh, so he's bringing it up a little bit. Yeah, I see. Like, uh, uh, that kind of sucks. But yeah, sure, 60 bucks. Just pay me back. Like, And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll pay you back. Like, plus, I'll pay you back plus more money. You know? Oh, okay. So it made it tempting for me to give more money. Yes. Then, like, maybe, like, 30 minutes later, he's like, Oh, hey, man, I got like another $30 of uh, bills I got to pay. Can you uh, give me another 30 Ooh, bucks? okay. Uh, so 100 bucks, right? Ah. Be like 120 ah. You know, I'm, I will be fine. He's like, cool. And then, ah. like, he, yeah, I guess he, he like quit work and mm. never showed up or never responded <laughs> to my text messages. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, I want to listen to how you felt about it, but he pulled a classic psychological technique on you, Jonathan. It's called foot in the door technique. Now, salesmen do this all the time. Like, you know, they come to your house and they don't immediately want to sell you something. They say, look, uh, it's really hot outside and my wife is in the car. Can I get a glass of water from you? Oh, wow. Okay, so you give them a glass of water and then they peek in the door and say, hey, look, it looks like the carpet looks a little dirty. Can I help you clean it? You know, no obligation. So they clean it for a little bit. At the end of the day, you, they sold you three vacuum cleaners you don't need. Okay. <laughs> and they all started with the foot in the door technique. And that's a good sales technique, but it can also be taken advantage of people that try to help you. Now, how did you feel when you're so-called friend took the hundred dollars and never paid you back i was upset and i told my other co-workers like hey yeah this this dude just stripped me and i you know one of my co-workers shared the story and he's like he pulled the same thing with me too ah so, okay so he's a serial car artist as they call him yeah. in some ways yeah so i see so you felt some anger in some way from that yeah but i mean a hundred two hundred dollars can't save his reputation now ah know? okay so, i like that's that also something to think about. okay so you kind of reversed a little bit also you learned a lesson yourself uh you know, you're trusting and giving, but at the same time, you want to see where you're putting your seeds, as they say, right? Where, where are they being planted? And that can be okay. So, right anger can be a way, maybe you got angry, and maybe you told other people to be careful with this guy. Yeah. And you want to protect other people as well, who may have been victims. So, that could be a good use of that. Because, uh, you know, I tell people the story, and like other people are like, oh yeah, he texted me too, asking for money, but I told him I was broke. Ah, there you go. Okay. Well, that's a good one. Always say you're broke. That always works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But on the other hand, though, the anger thought demon is different. It takes healthy anger and twists it into a grotesque version that constantly keeps you feeling hurt, agitated, slighted, and disrespected, even when others are not really intending to harm you and no harm is actually done to you. 
The anger thought demon is an expert at keeping you on the defensive. It makes you interpret even innocent comments as attacks against you. The anger thought demon can also give you a certain negative, false excitement when you think you're being treated unfairly or given less than you deserve. You may feel a certain intense, somewhat pleasant sensation of power in the beginning. As you think about what you want to do to the offending person, now you're going to get it. So Jonathan, my producer, when this guy ripped you off for the $100, and I know being a younger man, that's a lot of money for you. You worked very hard for it. Yeah, for sure. What was going through your head? What was the thought, anger thought in your head? I was like, oh, screw this guy, you know? Like, I was, well, you say so soft, Jonathan. Stay with, how did you really feel at the time? Uh, I was like pretty mad. Okay, say, say that phrase, but say it with, with anger. Con ganas, right? Ganas. Say uh, some anger. It's like, screw this guy. I don't want to talk to him anymore. But then if I, if I don't talk to him anymore, I won't get my money back. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. John, you're so soft and polite. It's hard for me to see you get angry, but I'm sure it may happen, right? Yeah. And uh, so that was going through your head. And maybe some people get into actually fist fights, you know, or verbal altercations. Have you ever been in any kind of fist or verbal or physical altercation? Um, so I would wrestle in high school like you know all throughout high school i'd be in wrestling and stuff yes so i mean that's probably like my actual like formal you know fighting training but right in terms of like a fist fight out of bar or something i've been pretty close uh -huh. so what, what what made it close and what stopped you from doing it it's just the other i was at like a house party and like the other right. guy was like looking at me where he's like yo dude like you know i don't like him like what what, the <laughs> what do you mean you don't like me <laughs> okay. I'm, just, I'm just drinking my cup you know like yes so then one of my friends was there and he's like, yo, John, just, nah, don't, don't, don't go there. Don't. Just, okay. So don't he want, so he wanted to challenge you to maybe to a fight. Yeah. And like he had his girl like on his lap. So he probably like wanted to look tough. Ah, uh, you know, okay. Like, I see. If you're just trying to start a fight with your girl on your lap, you just look like, you know. You're weak. Like you look like All a right. jerk. A jerk, you know? a wimp or whatever. Okay. But the, again, the key is how you react. Now, sometimes it can be useful to have a little bit of anger if you're facing real danger. The fight or flight response is something that helps you when you do have a, a, some perceived threat or danger. Your body produces more adrenaline and cortisone in your nervous system, so you have more energy to fight or run away from the danger, thereby increasing your odds of surviving. If you do decide to fight, your anger can give you the energy you need to defend yourself. Although the fight or flight response can save you from trouble, it can also harm your health in the long run if you keep it constantly activated. Some people, especially victims of trauma, have sensitive nervous systems. It doesn't take much for them to react with anger or fear. They're constantly on alert, and they interpret every signal or cue from the environment, people or circumstances, as if it were a personal threat to them. They are ready to respond with anger or aggression to any perceived slight or insult. Unfortunately, when your body is on constant alert, you tend to have higher blood pressure and your immune system weakens. You will constantly be defensive, on edge, and irritated as you anticipate the next verbal or emotional attack that comes your way. When the anger thought demon is in control of your mind like this, you're rarely at peace. Stress and anger are your daily companions. If the anger thought demon continues to grow unchecked in your mind, you may become a domineering and aggressive type of person. You may try to coerce others to do what you want them to do by using anger outbursts, intimidation, and threats of violence. This out-of-control anger will not only ruin your relationships and reputation, but can also cause you to suffer intensely from feelings of frustration, resentment, and defeat. If you can only be happy when people do exactly what you want them to do, then you probably won't be happy very often. If you try to use anger to intimidate people, they may fear you for a while, but then they will fight back or try to escape from you at the earliest opportunity. The anger thought demon sees human relationships as a battleground for dominance, control, and payback. The person who is controlled by the anger thought demon is always on the defensive. They think others are treating them unfairly and disrespectfully. They believe other people are trying to take advantage of them. As a result, the anger thought demon field person wants to punish the offending party for disrespecting them and not giving them their due. They want to get even, threaten, intimidate, and dominate those who won't give them what they think they deserve. When the anger thought demon rules your mind, you're like a puppet on a string. At the slightest perceived provocation or insult, you're ready to snap. Your blood pressure increases. Your fists clench. Your voice becomes shrill or loud. You're ready to mentally or physically pounce on the offender, the person who in your mind is denying you respect or value. Unless you're aware of and control the anger thought demon, it will possess you and make you do stupid and harmful things. You may lash out verbally with name calling, hurtful words, and profanity perhaps irrevocably harming a relationship you valued. 
It can get you into trouble at work, reprimanded or fired. It can ruin your reputation, and it can also result in serious legal trouble. Unfortunately, there are too many road rage incidents, assaults, and shootings which end up causing serious injury or death because the parties were not able to control their anger thought demon. If left unchecked, the raging anger thought demon is a relentless foe who prods you to take foolish actions, make them pay, that can cost your finances, reputation, freedom, and life itself. As we explore the thought demon of anger further, we need to consider that there are two different kinds of anger thought demons. First of all, there is the passive-aggressive personality type. This is the person who may not show overt anger, but is seething with resentment inside. They display their anger thought demon by appearing agreeable on the surface while being stubborn and refusing to do what they said they would do. Instead of being honest and straightforward about what they want or don't want, they will try to sabotage the things you want to accomplish. They will ruin a dinner, mess up a business proposition, lose an important item, or delay a commitment because they want to hurt you in ways that are less overt and obvious. These are individuals who don't have the courage to state what they really want, and instead rely on passive-aggressive behavior to block you and frustrate you in an indirect manner. Another example of the anger thought demon control person is a sociopath or narcissist self-centered person who has a low frustration tolerance and a limited delay of gratification. They want everything now. As Freud would say, these impulsive and immature people are dominated by their id, their aggressive and primitive impulses. They don't want to wait for that parking spot, so they try to take it from someone else. They yell at the other person for interfering with what they want. People who start arguments and fights while driving, also known as road ragers, are another example of self-centered individuals who want their way or else or else they explode with anger and even violence. Unfortunately, people have been killed on the roads due to explosively angry drivers who couldn't control their aggressive impulses to hurt those they think have disrespected them. Often the impatient and quickly angered person suffers from an inflated ego. They think they are better than everyone else and quickly become frustrated and rageful when they don't get what they want. Like a two-year-old throwing a tantrum, they scream, curse, and carry on as if their life depended on getting their way. Although they may not realize it at the time, these low-level individuals are stuck in an immature and destructive state of mind that greatly harms them and everyone around them. So how do you defeat the destructive power of the anger thought demon? Here are several things you can do. First of all, analyze your anger triggers. Write down the things that make you mad, your anger triggers, and rate them from 1, minimal anger, to 100, burning rage. Perhaps you're ticked off by rude people, traffic jams, waiting in lines, or mechanical failures car, phone, computer. Once you've identified your anger triggers, note how often you experience them and how angry they make you feel. As you become aware of the things that make you angry, you will be more prepared when the anger thought demon tries to infiltrate your mind. You can take the necessary precautions to protect yourself from the anger thought demon's fiery, malignant force as you maintain a peaceful and loving mind. Number two, give yourself a space between frustration and reaction. If you recognize that your anger is rising, and your primitive impulses are kicking in, then it's time to take a time out. Remove yourself from the anger-provoking situation, either physically or mentally. For example, when you're in the midst of an angry argument with a loved one, tell them that you're getting heated and are going to go away for a while. Perhaps you will shop, listen to music, or take a walk. Explain that you will pick up the conversation later when you are more calm and relaxed. If you're in the middle of a challenging situation, such as arguing with a coworker. Take a deep breath and experience the anger sensation going through you without reacting to it. You won't yell or scream at the other person either internally or externally. You will simply allow the anger emotions to flow through you as you realize that they are only temporary entities passing through your mind in the moment. As you give yourself this reactionless, empty space, you maintain your calmness. You avoid saying or doing things that you will later regret. You have the clarity of mind to resolve the problem or difficulty. Also, cultivate the mind of preference. Another antidote to the anger thought demon is to replace the mind of the man with the mind of preference. The mind of the man insists that people must do exactly what you want them to do. The life has to turn out the way you want it to. When the mind of the man rules your life, you will often feel frustrated, resentful, or angry because neither circumstances nor other people will always fulfill your expectations in exactly the way you desire. On the other hand, you will have a more powerful and peaceful existence when you cultivate the mind of preference. The mind of preference is a way of thinking in which you may prefer certain outcomes, but you don't demand them. You can have high expectations and goals, but you won't insist that things have to turn out exactly the way you want them to. 
In this paradoxical way of thinking and feeling, you set your sights high while at the same time allowing the higher nature to bring you what you really need. Now you are more relaxed, content, and balanced. On one hand, you aim to achieve the most beautiful and wonderful things you can imagine in life, such as love, contribution, wonderful experiences, and great success. At the same time, you will leave a space for the higher nature to work in your life and give you exactly what you need. When you do this, the pressures of failed expectations and frustrations are lifted from your shoulders. Now you can allow the good things in life to come to you as they may. Also, it's important to express empathy. If you're tempted to expose anger, you can choose to respond with empathy instead. When you're empathetic, you put yourself in the shoes of another person. You feel as they feel. This is an important part of being a successful and happy person. And doing this is one of the best antidotes to feeling frustrated and angry toward others. When someone cuts you off on the road, for example, and you feel the rage building up inside you, see if you can put yourself in their shoes for a moment. Think from their perspective. Try to feel what they're feeling. Maybe you sense they're having a bad day and weren't thinking clearly when they cut you off. Perhaps they just had a fight with their spouse or are worried about their children. Maybe they're concerned about financial or health issues. When you mentally put yourself in their mindset, you give them the benefit of the doubt. You see them as an imperfect human being, just like you, who is trying to live their best life possible, despite obstacles and setbacks. Now your anger toward them will evaporate because you realize you have moments of anger and frustration just like they do. As you forgive yourself for your lapses of judgment, you can forgive others for theirs as well. In the end, you understand that we all share a common humanity. And finally, practice the reverse lesson. You can learn how to be peaceful by observing angry people and seeing how much they suffer from their out-of-control anger. This is called the reverse lesson. You realize just how much damage the anger thought demon can do to you by observing how others suffer under his fiery influence. You see how their fists clench, their faces turn red and angry. Their voices become shrill or shrieking, and they lose control over themselves. They may even look like pathetic cartoon characters who are blowing their tops. If you look at them closely, you will see that they're almost comical in their facial expressions and reactions. You also recognize that this is exactly what you look like when you lose your cool and let the anger thought demon take over your reactions. Moreover, you recognize the terrible price that people pay when they allow the anger thought demon to control them. It's like they become totally different people. They morph into grotesque and ludicrous caricatures of their true peaceful and loving selves. When they're under the hypnotic trance of the anger thought demon, they make hurtful and mean-spirited comments they don't really mean. As a result, they end up irrevocably damaging relationships and reputations. Worse still, their anger reactions may lead them to engage in physical violence, which can have moral and legal consequences for them. When you see these out-of-control and angry people, you can be thankful that you're not one of them. By observing how much angry people pay for their anger, you learn how to be the opposite. The reverse lesson will teach you how to exchange your frustration for acceptance and your anger for peace. Now you will be peaceful, loving, and patient because you know this is the best and happiest way to be. Love your Irish students, it is possible to live peacefully in an angry world. Although the world may be conflict-ridden and full of discord in many ways, it is possible for you to live with a minimal amount of anger. Of course, a certain amount of anger can be useful to right wrongs and protect the defenseless. Yet many times anger can transform into the anger thought demon and develop negative momentum of its own, causing havoc in your health, relationships, and self-esteem. On the other hand, if you learn how to control your anger, you can choose to act from your higher self. And when you do this, you take a great leap toward recapturing your love, joy, and peace. With more love and joy in your mind and heart, you can offer more loving energy to others. In this way, you'll help bring the collective consciousness of the world from anger and hate to a higher frequency of love and compassion. This week, Love University students, my homework assignment to you is to be aware of your anger reaction. When you have that feeling, think of it as a color, a sensation, maybe red, and you experience it, but you don't react to it. And you realize it is only passing through you as an entity that is only there temporarily, this anger thought demon which you can control and you can master. At the same time, learn how to express empathy to the other person that you're angry with. Maybe they're having a difficult day. Maybe something is going on in their life that's making them act a certain way that's making you angry. And forgive them. Forgive them because they're human just like you. And you've also been angry 
and you've also made mistakes. Learn the reverse lesson. When you observe them, look at how much they suffer from the anger. Their veins pop. Their face turns red. You don't want to be like that. So you want to be more calm, peaceful, and in command. And give yourself a little time out, a little space between the anger and the reaction that you have. So you can calm down, be peaceful, and be loving. So love your students. This week, focus on having a peaceful and calm week. And use anger if you need it. Sometimes you need to right wrongs when people are being hurt unjustly. But a lot of the time, it's out of control because the anger thought even tries to exaggerate it. So don't let that happen to you. Maintain peace, calmness, and love in your mind at all times. You will be a warrior for love. So love your university students. If you want to comment on today's show, if you want to be on a future show, or if you have a show idea, you can reach us at 310-226-8090. Visit us at loveuniversity.love. Write to us at loveuniversitylove at gmail.com. You can also download the podcast on Podbean, Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Love University Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Love University Podcast. So until next time, have a peaceful, calm, and loving week. Love University students. Put away your notebooks, your iPads, your phones. Class is now dismissed. This is Dr. Alex Avila. Bye.